Hi guys, I'm in the final stages here of cleaning up and um, sanding and just prepping this space because this is our all new quarter berth. But it wasn't always like this. So let us take you back in time to two months ago when we first started fixing these things up. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marule is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. Previously on Free Range Sailing, we showed you the state of our rotten plywood and water damaged lockers in our quarter berths. Last week, as part of the overall demolition process, Troy removed the rotten ply using a multi-tool, keeping a nice inch wide fiberglass lip ready for us to place the new floors in. With the old ply removed, there was more room for us to work. The next step was to transfer the line of the hull onto a strip of MDF in order to get the correct shape for our new quarter berth floor. Here, Troy is using a compass with the arm set at the width of the greatest gap, so the needle is following the contour with the pencil recording the path. That line gave us an accurate guide to cut out the thin sheet of MDF to the contour of the hull. The final touches and shaping were done with 80 grit sandpaper. As long as the corners of each side of these are in the corners where I want them, then this only has to register against that surface and these take care of the other corners, which is fine. So we'll just make that 700. Using a right angle to cut that was totally unnecessary. The corners are already sorted out here. So all I need to do is put that down so that it contacts and lines up with the corners here and there, just so that line is continuous. And there's our template. Hot glue is a quick and convenient tool for making templates from MDF. This, this MDF, it didn't come as sheets like this. It was like that long, but 60 centimetres or 600 wide. And our friend Peter was um, gracious enough to allow me to use his table saw, so I just ran a whole bunch of these little strips. So we'll be able to do this, and I'll be able to make a template to determine the size of the plywood cutouts that are going into here. And then I'll be able to make them and the hatches that open away from the boat. I'll be able to take these templates and they'll all be really great. Once I'm done with that, I don't need to throw these away. I can undo the hot glue with a, a you know, like a, a paint scraper or a chisel, undo it all and then use it again for when we're making our cabinetry. MDF is medium density fiberboard, so it's not cardboard. It's made out of wood pulp, but it's very dimensionally stable and it's easy to cut and it's easy to sand. So it's, it's really ideal for making these templates. So rather than thinking of templates as like a solid shape, um, exactly like the finished product, if we think that we only just need the outline, you can just get away with these strips. Of course, when it's all made, I'm going to just need a few bracing strips across, all right, to make it a little bit solid, to, so it's easy to transport. And this stuff is really great because you can make notes all over it as well, and we'll, we'll be doing that, okay? Once this is all glued up, then we'll write a whole bunch of notes and we'll see if we can get this out in one piece. So there's basically a, a quick way of just making up a template. So now I know that that, when it's cut out on the bandsaw or on a bit of plywood, will all be accurate. This bit here, I just need to cut that off. I just wanted to make that relatively square. And it was relatively easy, and we didn't have to depend very much on measurements. So remember back in the old days of carpentry, a lot of carpenters, they didn't use numbers and a lot of them were illiterate. 
So they use story sticks. They, they actually put marks on a stick and carry that and cut everything to pieces. So this is sort of a, a modern variation on the theme. We're laying out these just purely to trace the outline and then we can take this off and we can, can cut it into our expensive marine ply. This is cheap stuff. Make all your mistakes on the cheap stuff. made our plywood templates, they look a bit rough at the moment, don't they, because I had to fold them to get into that great little hatchback we've been given. And while we're on the theme of people helping us out, this is Lance. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to give him too much camera camera shock at the moment. But um, this is a great workshop you've made available to us, and we really appreciate it. No, that's okay. So you've, you've set all this up um, yourself over time, and yeah. just add to it when you can? Or? Yeah, over, over several years. and keep the Gumtree Alerts active, and then when something comes up that we've been, been looking for and at a good price, we snap it up. You'll have a whole bunch of people on Gumtree now just for Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Lance's Wood Workshop is comprehensive, well laid out, and all of the machines have been meticulously set up, which took a lot of the challenge out of doing a reasonable job. You can see the ply is not long enough for the stencil, um, but we have a cunning scheme. We've already cut one before, where these, um, where these quarter berths will go, there's a little divider that makes up the various compartments. So we're going to just cut it where it rests on one of those dividers and I'll be, I'll be putting a support in and they'll join when we put some fiberglass in there, you never know. With the panels cut to the size of the compartments, we needed to make hatch openings for locker access. We'd taken a measurement of where each compartment's bulkhead was and we just transferred that onto the ply to establish where to cut. With the lines accurately marked out, we plan to use two saws to make the cuts, starting on the straight cuts by plunge cutting with a circular saw, and then the curved cuts using a jigsaw. With the first hatch lid cut, it was time to quickly measure out and repeat the process for the remaining three hatch lids. What I want is it the same in from each end, not necessarily the top. Instead of measuring each time, I just find it's easier to find something that I can measure once and adjust it and set it nice and firmly and then just mark it off and what it does is it really it speeds your work up but it avoids errors creeping in i'd like to be able to just the ultimate of no errors at all would just be able to lay one straight on but they're two different things they're two different sides they're two different sizes of a clansman or the same clansman but everything is just totally different because what they did with the clansmen, they built it, of course, in the mould, and then they just put workers in there and said, right, build it up, and they got ply, and they just glassed it in. So depending on the sort of day they had, was how square everything is. We're having a great day, so we'll try and make it a bit squarer than they did. But all I need now is something that's pretty straight. That side has bad sides, so we'll use the other side. All right, and I want the hatch to be 400 millimetres. It, it's an arbitrary number, but suffice to say that I'm going to find where 400 is, 40 centimetres, 400 millimetres, and rather than put that blunt side and just sort of try and put it on that mark, if you've seen some of our videos before, you'll know what I'm going to be on about. I prefer to put the 400 on the mark where I'm measuring from, and now I've got a nice hard metal edge that I can run a pencil on. It's probably going a little bit overboard, making some lockers for a boat. But if you try really hard to do the best you can, even if you screw up, you'll probably just get good enough. Whereas if you just try and slap together some good enough job, <laughs> it, could be, it could end up anywhere. There we go. So what, the other thing that we want to do now is some nice round corners. That does two things. It's a nice smoother cut. It does three things, it looks better, um, it's smoother to cut, but also on a boat, anytime you have a sharp 90 de degree corner, or even more acute, stresses will concentrate there and you'll get a crack leading off. 
And in fact, if you are on a steel boat or an aluminium boat, more particularly, if you see a crack leading, what they'll do is stop that crack with a drill hole, with a round hole, and that whoop, distributes the forces. I just want a, a 40 mil radius um, bend going around there. Do you remember how to construct those sort of things? It's not hard. So we'll just go back for a, a visit back to primary school geography. We'll go to the apex of the corner and we'll mark out 40 mil on one leg, 40 mil on the other leg, and that gives us a spot where we can draw arcs from and where they coincide. We can just put our compass and draw in our round corner that we can follow with our saw. Is that geography or geometry? Geometry. <laughs> I'm a sailor, I need to know geography. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I've labelled it, port up. You, can, you can't put enough labels on things. You can, uh, you can look at that jumble there and get pretty confused. So make sure you just scribble over everything. It's going to be painted over. To do our plunge cut, what we need to do is get a nice... This is quite a fancy fence. <laughs> Beautiful furniture grade fence. And I'm just going to set it up. Circular saws. If you didn't know, this one's been marked 40 millimetres from the edge. They usually have a rounded um, figure and it's usually known. And that means you can set a fence from a distance of a line you want to cut and run along and get a nice straight cut. So once again, we've got our things set for 40 and that means we can just lay it on there and actually get something firm to, to butt the fence up against. You know? rather than a pencil line that you just sort of get it again, yeah? Once Troy had made the cuts, I cleaned things up using this belt sander. A really great refinement was that Lance had connected a dust extractor to all of his machines. Okay, cuts are all done. Lids. So now what we're going to do is just cut some strips that are 60 millimetres wide by 300 long. We cut the supporting strips on the table and drop saws and then rounded over the edges on the router table. Back at the boat we did a bit of custom fitting and measured up the support piece for filleting into the locker bulkhead. So when we were talking about where I was going to brace it and incidentally join these panels, this is where there's that divider there. So it's a half inch down. It will be resting on there and that will make that a solid connection. Yeah. So that can be screwed down and glassed in. And then when those go on top of there, it will join it all up and it will support it and it'll be a very strong, strong quarter berth. Now these pieces here that we're using for the lip are 60 millimetres. So I'm marking in 20 from here and I'm marking in 20 from here and this line is where I'm going to be putting screw holes and this line is to line up with the lip. So what that'll end up is one third will be sticking out and then halfway between the two bits that are in there is where the screws will be. So there'll be plenty of meat in there. So just setting up my verniers as 20, just it just speeds up the layout really well. What's that tool for? That's a little center punch. Normally um, a spring-loaded center punch like that you would use in steel work, but I've backed it right off just for ply. But when you hear that little crack, you know that it's made a little hole in the timber and that little hole in the timber makes it really easy just to locate the drill bit. See, it doesn't go anywhere. So now that I've got those layout lines, all I have to do is match up that middle line, which is the middle of this piece, with that middle line, which is the middle of that gap. And I know that if I have that line there matched with that edge, then this line here will be in the middle 
So mm -hmm. I'm just pre-drilling all of these now because later on when I assemble it, I'll be giving everything a smear with epoxy glue and then I'll be screwing it together with some eight gauge, three and a quarter screws. This bit, even though it's getting a bit blunt now, as it drills, it countersinks ready for screws. Mm -hmm. Just to make it a bit quicker for lining up, I've also got my drill bit and I just drop it down one of the holes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you put the bit in underneath it to hold it. Yeah, so it makes it makes life just easy, easy to definitely, absolutely line up. Yeah. But what I'll do first is just stick some of our nice thickened epoxy on there, as it were. When we returned to the house, Troy got busy giving the panels a coat of polyester resin. All the layout's been done, we've constructed them pretty much, and now I'm just, before we go on, they're getting a coat of polyester resin. It's cheaper than epoxy, um, and the adhesion on timbers should be pretty good. So we're just sealing the timber, um, making it sort of watertight before installation and paint. Before we installed the newly resin cordobet floors and locker lids, I gave the insides of the lockers a thorough sanding and wash and then applied a couple of coats of Alcat enamel primer and top coat. Now the cordobet timber, it's all been cut and glued and screwed into place. Underneath this timber lip, uh, you know, the timber cordobet that we put in, obviously I didn't paint that before I put it in and the reason being is because we used um, two-part epoxy to not only screw it, but glue it down to this fiberglass tab here. And that's where a lot of the strength was. There's like a, there's a, an inch thick fillet underneath it. It's really strong. So we've secured this down, um, but there is going to be a little gap here. So what I've done is gone and just got that um, expanding polyurethane foam that's in a can and just squirted it in the gap here. I've done that because I just want a lightweight and quick way to fill that gap without using too much epoxy because the strength has come from the already, uh, you know, the already existing tab. So this is just to fair it and give it a nice lead into the hull so it makes the repair more or less invisible. So this is what we've got after I've cut it with the knife. So I've just finished standing in the wall here of our quarter berth. Uh, we didn't put it, film it on camera, but we, we glassed in the edges here that Troy had filled in with that foam. So we put um, strips of fiberglass and thicken epoxy over it. And I've also been sanding that uh, using the orbital sander, but also using the multi-tool with the sanding attachment, which is really fantastic. It's a little triangle attachment. So using that just to fair back the floors of these quarter berths so that the joins sort of seamless, ready for the first coat of primer, of Alcan enamel primer, and then a coat of top coat. I think actually I might do two coats of primer and two coats of top coat just so that it's really tough. We have actually already painted the wall on this side a bit earlier and that way Troy could install some conduit in there so that the wiring runs and everything that goes back to the stern so that's mainly like our solar wiring and also autopilot and um, deck light. So that could run back in a nice, neat, clean finish. So I'm here right aft and you can see where our new flooring has gone in, our new really thick piece of marine ply. And we've put thickened epoxy in here and some layers of glass and more thickened epoxy. And I've fared that back with the multi-tool and the orbital sander ready for paint. It's not like, it's not a perfectly smooth finish, but it is the quarter berth and it is going to have a mattress sitting on top of it. So, I mean, and the rest of the boat, the finish of the boat is rough anyway, so we're not going crazy, <laughs> getting all pedantic about fairing this perfectly. But yeah, you can see the rise there. So she's nice and strong now. She's not going anywhere. And I'm lying on top of one of the hatch lids and there's another hatch lid behind me. I hope you 
enjoyed the episode this week and if you did it really helps us out if you give it a big thumbs up it kind of gives us exposure to a broader audience and like-minded people also and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel that really helps us out too and you'll get if you hit the bell button you'll get notifications to keep up to date with everything that we're up to and our new releases um, I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Lance and his family for letting us use the workshop space. We're going to be going back there a lot over the coming weeks as we fix up and do the interior of our sailboat. So there's lots to look forward to on free range sailing. I'm really excited to share with you guys the transformation of the inside of our sailboat. It's been a really amazing journey. So stick with us. Um, more coming your way. Also a massive shout out and a massive thank you to all of those of you who have um, supported us on Patreon and PayPal. We couldn't have done this if it without you, so from the bottom of our hearts, we are really grateful. Thank you and see you next week.